Have you been thinking of saving for your child's college education? You probably heard of a 529 plan. Is that the best way to go about it? What are the pros and cons of a 529 plan? Which 529 plan should you choose? Or should you contribute to a Roth IRA instead? In this video, I'm gonna explain all of these things through five Q&A style tips, and I'm gonna share a word of caution at the end. Question number one, should you save through a 529 plan? Now a 529 plan is an investment account that you can use to save for your child's college. And now you can also use it for K-12 expenses. 529 plans are usually sponsored by states. And so if you live in DC, there's gonna be a DC 529 plan. Maryland has their own 529 plan. But does that mean if you live, for example, in California, you should just go with the California 529 plan? Well, not necessarily, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Question number two, what are the advantages of a 529 plan? Why would you wanna save for your child's college education using a 529? Well, I'm gonna give you three main reasons. One, you can invest your savings, your child's college savings through a 529 plan. So that means you can invest it in either stocks or bonds and it can potentially grow versus just letting it sit in a uh, checking account. Second reason why you should consider a 529 plan is it can potentially grow tax-free. So for example, if you put this year $10,000 in a 529 plan, you manage to grow it to, for example, 20,000 over the next 18 years, you don't have to pay taxes on that $10,000 that you made inside that 529 plan. Now, assuming that you use it for education expenses. Third reason, in some states, not all, but in some states, you can deduct your 529 contributions from your state income tax return, which means it's tax deductible. It can potentially be tax deductible in your state. So in other words, you can get a tax benefit from the federal government because it's growing tax-free and from your state. So in this graph, which is which was published in the Journal of Financial Planning several years ago, we can see the benefits of three different types of savings towards your child's college. So this is assuming that the parents saved 64,000 over the course of many years. And in the first column, we can see that if you just let it sit in a checking account, there is zero savings or zero benefit of doing that. If you invested your savings in an investment account, in a taxable brokerage account, and you invested it in a certain way, in this example, you would have made around 29,000 in earnings. So that's your benefit of doing that. In the third bar graph, we can see that you can also have invested it in the same way and you would have earned the same amount, that blue solid box over there. But in addition to that, you get additional tax benefits from the federal and in this case, the state government. A 529 plan off also offers some flexibility. So not just tuition, you can also use it for room and board, computers, books. And if for some reason your daughter gets a scholarship in college and she doesn't get to use the 529 savings that you set aside and she goes to grad school, she can also use that for graduate school. You can also change the beneficiary. So let's say your teenage daughter, you get into a fight with your teenage daughter, you can tell her, you know what, I'm gonna cut you out from your 529 plan. I'm just kidding, hopefully it doesn't ever come to that, but you can change your beneficiary. So let's say, your daughter got her scholarship, you can change it to, you can change the beneficiary to your, to your son. Or if they both are super smart and get scholarships, you can even think about using it for your own graduate school, or maybe you want to get a PhD someday. You can use it for that too. Question number three, what are the disadvantages of a 529 plan? While a 529 has many great benefits, it also has a few cons that you need to be aware about. Remember when we said that you don't have to pay taxes on the earnings? Well, that's only true if you use it for education. So if your only child decides not to go to college, then 
when you have to take out the money that you saved in a 529 plan, you have to pay taxes on the earnings. And for some reason, you wake up one day and you say, you know what, that 50,000 that I saved in my 529 plan, I'm just gonna take it out and buy a Tesla. I feel like doing that. Well, if you do that, you're gonna have to pay a 10% withdrawal penalty because you're not using it for education. So if you're getting convinced that you should open a 529 plan, question number four, where should you open a 529 plan? And I'm going to give you here your favorite popular answer, which is, it depends. If you live in a state that offers tax deductible benefits and the investment options of that 529 plan is really good, then you might consider contributing to your state's 529 plan. If you live in a state that does not offer tax deductible benefits, let's say in California or in New Jersey, and there are many other states that don't give a state tax deduction, and the 529 investment plan options there are not that good, then you can consider shopping around. Check out the other 529 plan in other states. And this is really where a financial planner can be of assistance. Now we come to the fifth and final question, 529 versus Roth IRA, which is better? Now, some families, including a few of our clients, hesitate about contributing to a 529 because they're worried that maybe their child won't go to college or maybe they'll get a scholarship and they'll end up paying taxes in a 10% withdrawal penalty. Some of them might have a spouse that is a UK citizen or a German citizen and college in Europe is generally cheaper than the way that, oh, maybe my 529 savings, I won't be able to use that for that and I'll end up paying a penalty. There is an advanced alternative that some advisors might have you consider, which is contributing to a Roth IRA for your child's education. Why? Because if you do that, you can take out your contributions, not the earnings, but your contributions without any tax implications or without any penalty. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. Now, 529 versus Roth IRA, let me give you my quick thoughts on those. If you're eligible for a Roth and you have limited funds, Roth is a very attractive feature for the same reason that I just mentioned. You can take out your contributions at any point in time and you can use it for college or if you change your mind, you can designate it for your retirement. Now, the main thing that you have to think about is there's no ready-made portfolios like that in a 529. You have to know how to invest those Roth IRA contributions. Now, if you can potentially do both 529 in a Roth IRA, I would say, why not do both, right? You contribute to Roth IRA, get the benefits from that, contribute also to a 529, get the benefits from that. Worst case scenario, your 529 savings, if you can't use it for your child's college education for some reason, then, then you just pay taxes on the earnings, just like you would have had anyway if you invested it in a regular taxable brokerage account, or just like what you do if you're contributing to a pre-tax 401k, right? It's growing tax referred, but you have to pay taxes when you take it out at the end. So let me know in the comments section, I'm curious to hear whether you decide to save for your child's college education through a 529 or through a Roth IRA. A word of caution, though, if you're contributing to a 529 plan, there's an option to choose target date portfolios based on your son or your daughter's age. So for example, if your child is gonna go to college by 2038, then there is a 28 portfolio that you can choose to invest your 529 contributions. Now, just be careful of those target date portfolios because in some cases, not all, but in some cases, it might be too aggressive based on your circumstances. So what do I mean by that? If your child is only three to four years away from college, some target date 529 portfolios that I've seen still have that specific target date portfolio invested in 40% stocks. Now, personally for me, 
if you're gonna need the money in three to four years, 40% stocks, I feel like that's too much money in a very volatile investment. That's really up to your risk tolerance, but I just think that you need to be aware of that. Now, if you decide to contribute to your Roth IRA for your child's education slash retirement, do check out our video on three common mistakes with Roth IRAs. And if you're no longer eligible for a Roth IRA, but want to learn a legal hack to be able to still do so, please do check out our video on how to do a backdoor Roth IRA.